Hi, my name's Jonathan Hicks. I'm back at the Dice Cup, and this evening I'm joined by Steve. Andy. Steve. And we've just finished playing Broom Service, which was actually the uh, Kenish Builders Yaros winner in 2015. So a highly acclaimed game. Now, what you're doing in this game is you have a couple of these witches, uh, which you can see at this point, it's kind of the end of the game, they've travelled most of the way across this board because they all start, if I just grab a few of these, over in this castle over here. Uh, in fact, I was black in this case, so let me just take a black one over there. And um, everyone picks four cards from a selection of cards that they've all got, and everyone's got exactly the same set of cards. So um, there's different types of cards, I'll just explain quickly what to do. You've got witches, um, four different colours of witches, so there's the green witch, the brown witch, the yellow witch, and there's a um, grey one here. And these basically will move you onto a particular space. So if I play my forest witch, then from here I could potentially move my guy into here, or into here. But the dilemma is when you play the card, you can either choose to be a brave forest witch, which will give you a better ability, or you can be a cowardly witch, which will just do the basic version of the card. Now, if I choose to go brave, then I don't get to do the action immediately, but then Steve would look, and if he has picked a forest witch, he would have to play it, and he could choose to go either cowardly or brave. So he might decide to go cowardly and does the basic action. And then we see if Andy's picked it, and he's picked the Forest Witch, so he'd re he would reveal his. But he maybe decides to go brave. Now, if I've decided to go brave, and then he decides to go brave, I get to do nothing at all. Not even the basic version, I get nothing. But then, when it comes around Steve, if he hasn't got it, he just passes. But if he has it and picks brave, then Andy wouldn't get to do anything either. So picking brave really is a brave decision, because if anyone else after you picks brave, you're going to get to do nothing. Obviously, if you're the last person, then you can pick Brave without any consequences, and that's great. But you will go first when playing the next card, and it's always a disadvantage going first, because obviously there's a lot of people after you who could potentially call Brave. So in this case, um, well, to start with, they're just going to move you. I'll talk about the others in a second. There are a couple of um, uh, cards that will let you uh, gather. Let me just talk about the gathering ones. So we've got the purple gathering, the orange gathering, the green gathering, which will let you get different kinds of potions, effectively. And you can also pick up wands. I'll explain what they do in a minute. Uh, but once you've got these potions, you can spend these druid cards or the brave ability on some of these to sell your potions. You can see there's lots of potions all over the board. So when you go to a particular spot, if I had moved to here, I could then sell an orange potion because it's got an orange top um, and it's this tower is next to the green area. And that would get me four points. You're kind of selling your potions all over the board to try and get points that way. Um, but the wands are important because at the start of the game, there's lots of these cloud tokens all over the board. Thanks, Steve. And if you're next to one of the areas with a cloud token, you can spend the appropriate number of wands to get these lightning bolt symbols. Now, um, some of them, some of the areas start with clouds, and you can't move into the cloudy area um, when there's a cloud here. So you'd have to spend a wand to dispel the cloud using your weather fairy. Uh, and you kind of keep this lightning bolt at the end. There's a bit of end game scoring. You get uh, points for having lots and lots of the lightning bolts that you've collected um, and also having sets of resources. And there's a couple of other spots that are sort of randomly plonked around the board in various spaces. If you go to these grey ones, you get a kind of one-off special ability and you also get to claim these tokens. And if you get sets of those, these are the amulets, you're getting points at the end. And there's a few other nice spaces to do various things. So for example, if you go here, you get to teleport one of your witches to the A spot or the B spot, but essentially you're running around on the board by playing the cards, picking up the potions and spending them in for points plus some end game points. The trick though all the way through is looking at what everyone else is doing and deciding are they likely to play this card? Are they going to be brave? Will they be cowardly? So lots of interesting thought processes there. All right, what do we think? Yeah, I like this game. They've done a very good job of keeping it interesting with variable setups, double-sided boards, different tokens in different spaces, um, and if you play with fewer than five players, which we played with five, you play fewer than five, there's like a dummy deck which makes certain actions cost you VPs to take in a round. So you've still got that same dilemma of any game where you're trying to predict what your opponent's are trying to do, and if you can predict well you're going to do better, it is, is a good game. Um, it all comes down to how well you deal with the brave actions. Do you dare say brave at this certain point, knowing you know, you, you're kind of playing on the next person, the next two people, not to have the card in the hand, or even if they do, not to say brave or so on. Um, so it's really interesting, to kind of like it plays around on turn order all the time. You don't want to be brave necessarily because it means you go first, but you do get a better action, so it's really nice. Okay, Andy? 
Yeah, I was really impressed with this game. I was quite pleased when Steve pulled this out because the people that made this game also make uh, Isle of Sky, which is one of my favourite games of all time. And it is, like Steve said, it's a really good game. It's very well balanced. It's uh, it's quick. It keeps everyone involved. You're just playing one card at a time. There's no downtime in the turns, um, and you really do feel it when you when you make a brave uh, decision and you don't get to do anything. So that really you feel that, and it makes you think about it more. Um, I don't know how well it would play with two players, which is what I like to, normally like to do at home. Um, that would be interesting to see. I know Steve talked a bit about the some of the special rules that come in with fewer players, um, but overall, yeah, very good game. Enjoyed it. Okay, Steve. Um, I'm a little bit on the fence. I mean, it, it, it's okay. Um, it is um, not really my kind of uh, game that I would usually go for. Uh, I don't like the fact that there are some times where, where you may not even get a go. Not, not a fan of that uh, that me uh, mechanic. Um, but you know, it, it, it's a nice, pre uh, pretty game. Um, I think it's it's uh, better with more people than with uh, two or three people. Um, but all, all in all, you know, to, to kill an hour or so, it's all right. Rating? Four. Okay. I'd say somewhere between a six, seven, I'd say nearer to a seven. Okay, Steve? Seven and a half. Mm, okay. I thought it was great, personally. It's my favourite kind of interaction in the game. You're not kind of, there's no take that, you're not attacking people as such, but you really care what other people are doing. So you've got to pay attention to everyone else. So you can't just sit there and play your own private game. You've really got to think, okay, he's in the mountains. He could sweep away the cloud this turn. So does he have enough wands? You, you know, you're paying attention to people's resources, where they are. I really liked it. There was lots to think about but it's thinking about it in a way that's getting you to interact with other people as well. Um, it doesn't feel too complex, which is nice, but the decisions are always interesting. I always felt like I had lots to think about. The variability, as Steve says, is great. There are these nice little event cards that pop up at the beginning of every round that change it slightly, so there might be more points for finishing in a certain region or having certain kinds of resources. So that gives you little targets to aim for as you go through the game. I mean, effectively, you're just trying to churn out the points by picking up the potions uh, but it's very nice it was a bit slow probably with five players um, but I still find I was engaged um, throughout so I um, just don't know why it's taken me so long to play this one um, really enjoyed it I've got an 8 out of 10 alright thanks very much for watching that was Broom Service